This conference will now be recorded. Virtual annual funded partners meeting. For those of you who throughout the week, we thank you so much for your participation. And for those of you who are joining us for the first time today, well, we welcome you. The presentation is specifically by our grants management system called Funding Track, which many of you may be familiar with. Our IT and finance teams will be providing you with a general overview of the system, along, along with step-by-step -step instructions to complete various tasks that are critical to your contract requirements and overall compliance. There will also be an opportunity for question and answers at the end of the presentation today. So we are asking that you provide your questions through the chat function of our session, and we will answer them in the order that they are received. Alternatively, and if preferred, you can ask them verbally as well at the end of the session. Just be sure to unmute your microphone to do so. And once your question has been answered, we ask that you please return your microphone to mute to eliminate any background noise or feedback. Lastly, I want to advise everyone that this virtual meeting is being recorded and will be made available to each of you via email by close of business today. And all sessions will also be made available on our website on Friday, September 25th. I'll now turn it over to our IT team. Thank you very much. Good morning. Thank you, Dewan. I appreciate uh, speaking with you and seeing you today. Uh, just a quick introduction. My name is Patrick O'Connor. I am the Business Systems Administrator at FAM League uh, under the IT uh, department. Uh, I want to introduce Derek Ray. She's our Senior Director of Impact. She supervises the DE team and the IT team. So we welcome her uh, to today's conference. Um, so I just want to talk about a little bit about my responsibilities at Family League. Uh, I work on the front end and the back end, uh, the coding of funding track, uh, helping turn the paper grants into funding track applications online. Um, I also help create reports and workflows associated with the grant applications and the reports, and also create the online reviews and uh, for the grant applications. So I'm also involved in the food access uh, software and creating reports and uh, maintaining the backend SQL Server um, and implementing the programming of the software itself. So I'm also involved with DocuSign <laughs> and help maintain the backend of the family.org website. But enough about me, I want to uh, introduce the IT team. Uh, Clint Middleton is our data impact specialist. And I believe Clint has been here for about five years or more now. Uh, so Clint is very involved in trainings. Uh, he's worked with out of school time uh, programs, particularly around attendance, and he creates interactive mapping tools also. So Clint is committed to helping the uh, staff of Family League as well as the external partners. Uh, of fund, the fund department. So Clint is, is great, and I'm really glad to work with you, Clint. Uh, Chevy Eversley is our help desk assistant, and I believe Chevy has been here over two years now, maybe more than that. Uh, Chevy is very dedicated and a heartwarming person, and she is uh, here to help resolve whatever funding track issues you may have and questions. So I think Chevy is also great, and I'm really glad to work with her. So I want to highlight uh, in the month of September, Chevy and Clint uh, have conducted five funding track trainings through our professional development venue. And for October and the coming months, there'll be two trainings per month on funding track, one uh, during business hours and one in the evening. So I'm looking forward to having those happen. Uh, before I pass the uh, presentation along to Clint and Chevy, I want to highlight uh, the next slide, the reporting slide. The DE team highlighted this yesterday, specifically Daphne Washington, and the importance of, of reporting. So you're going to see in the presentation today, uh, Clinton and Shebby are going to talk about reporting. But it's very, very important that uh, your reports are turned in in a timely manner. And if you have any questions on the reports, please reach out to, to Shebby and our IT support, and we'll gladly uh, help work through any and all issues uh, dealing with reporting. So just want to highlight that. and. Also want to say that uh, Clint, Chevy, and I are working on uh, recording videos for all the reports. So they'll be available very soon. I started working on that yesterday with the standard budget report, which will be available very soon uh, for all of our funded partners to look at and walk through at their leisure. So with that said, I want to pass it on to Chevy and Clint and the next slide. Thank you. 
<laughs> I got you. All right. So for those who are unfamiliar, hi, I'm Clint. This is Clint. Uh, for those who are unfamiliar, Fl uh, Funding Track is our internal GMS. That's a grants management system. Uh, our grant, you, is everyone hear me clearly? Uh, Funding Track uh, aids Family League in completing our grant cycle from beginning to end. It also uh, allows funded partners and those who seek uh, to work with Family League to not only complete applications with us uh, for the grant proposals that we have available, but it also helps the funded partner complete their own grant cycle from beginning to end uh, within the system, including, as Patrick just mentioned, reporting, uh, applications, as well as other documentation for data that we all collect uh, throughout the year. Uh, this platform is completely web-based, which means that you are able to reach it as long as you have a stable internet connection um, and a obviously a compatible device. Um, we will talk later in the presentation about what specific browsers should be used and what you know, what exactly what setup you need exactly to use Funding Track. Uh, but for the most part, just giving you that little bit of background about how Funding Track came into uh, development. Uh, family, it is uh, there for applications and reports and is also a place where uh, current and new partners can apply for funding and uh, select their reporting uh, workflow completion. Okay. As mentioned before, uh, I, my name is Clint Middleton, and I am the Data Impact Specialist here at Family League. And my co-host. <laughs> Hi, everyone. My name is Chevy Eversley. I am your help desk person. So if you've ever sent in a ticket before, um, I'm that person you sent that message to, and um, the one that responded. Um, more than likely, I'm the one that responded. Um, so I'm here to help and support in any way that I can. Right. Just a quick little agenda for what we're going to go through today. We're going to go through a quick help desk reminder, remind you all how to seek out help when you're having issues with the system, even when you're not having issues with the system. If you need changes made, if you're uh, concerned about anything with your uh, IT and data needs, then we're going to show you all how to get that help. We're also, like I said, we're going to talk about the browser and what browser we use specifically and how to get to the actual funding track site and what logging in looks like, as well as the different levels of access available within the system and how to navigate through it. Uh, we're going to talk about completing reports and actually getting through your workflows. And, well, not necessarily getting through your specific workflows. But we're going to talk about how to complete any report in funding track and as, long, as well as uh, document uploads which are part of those reports, and then submitting and what it looks like uh, when the system is operating correctly, okay? We're also gonna take a look at a couple of different viewable report states and what it means for a report to be in one state or another and what that view looks like for you all, okay? And then we're gonna finish up with some questions and answers as Delana mentioned before, okay? All right, so how do you get help? You're in funding track, something's not appearing as it should, or maybe you're trying to access funding track, maybe your password, you need to have it reset, or um, any multitude of issues, right? How do you get some help? So you wanna send an email to support at familylead.org. Um, that creates a ticket that I can respond to. You can also call us. When you call us, um, you'll be calling the number on the screen, of course, um, area code 443-423-0910. Um, that also creates a ticket. It grabs the audio from what you say in the ticket and the voicemail that you leave and creates a ticket for us as well. Whether you choose the option of emailing or calling it in, you always wanna provide the details we need to work on your ticket. So you wanna give us your name, your program type, your organization and your site, your school, if that is related to the issue. And of course, a description of the actual issue so we can get to work. So getting right into how we uh, get to funding track. So first and foremost, we wanna always make sure that we are using Google Chrome, guys, it does not matter what device you're on, you are always going to want to use Google Chrome. 
Uh, while Funny Crack may operate in other browsers, it will not be its most optimal use. Uh, it will not give you the most optimal use in any other browser other than Google Chrome. So here is stated on the slide in Chrome we trust. Now, as far as getting to funding track, there are two options to do so. In the center of the screen, in the uh, sort of in the background there, you'll see the original way, which is the home page for uh, the landing page for funding track and login page. And the way you get there is going to be through the web address flb.flux.io. Obviously, the HTTPS colon slash slash um, goes in front of that. If you go to this address, it'll take you directly to that landing page for funding track. What our recommendation is that when you go there for the first time, you bookmark it or otherwise save it in your browser, and that way you never have to do it again, right? Uh, obviously, like I said, that will take you straight to the landing page. Another way, if you ever forget this web address or for some reason can't access it that way, you are able to go to familyleague.org, a Family League website. Uh, there, you can navigate from the actual familyleague.org homepage, but to make this easier on yourselves, we're gonna recommend that you add in the slash funded dash partnerships uh, piece to that address, which will take you to the funded partnerships page where you can then scroll down and click on the funding track tab that you see circled there. And then you'll see this little piece where it says access funding track. You'll notice that there are currently two videos there beneath the access funding track uh, button. Admittedly, these are a bit outdated and we will be redoing them very soon so that in the rest of the fiscal or in the rest of this year, you all will be able to refer to those uh, for your registration needs as well as your grant application tutorials. Okay. Next slide. <laughs> there we go. All right. So um, when you get to that landing page to log in, typically your email address that we use for your um, user profile is what you're going to enter in that login screen along with your password. If you are a brand new user um, and I just created your user profile in Funding Track, um, you would get an email that goes out with a registration link, a setup link that will help you create your unique password. If you never receive that, of course, you send it, um, uh, send a ticket to us and we can get you set up in the system with a password. <clears throat> Once inside Funding Track, each of you will take on a, a certain level of access. Or, or better yet, take on a certain role. Uh, no matter what your role assignment is within Funding Track, it will fall into one of these categories as all of you are funded partners. These are all the view of all of the levels of access for a funded partner. The very basis of this uh, of this of this access is going to be the reviewer level. Obviously, none of you will be reviewers if you are in a programmatic uh, in your in a programmatic connection with family. Reviewer status is more so meant for those who, will, who aid us in reviewing applications and any other submitted documentation uh, for only the purposes of uh, viewing and submitting scores. What most of you all will fall into, uh, which is program directors, program staff, and school staff, is the program staff level of access. Under the program, under the program level of access, uh, you all will be able to not only view and submit possible scoring or information that needs to be submitted, but you'll also be able to edit and create um, this information for, or populate this information for yourselves and save it. You'll notice that we say there submit with prior approval because in some of your program types, those who are the program staff are not always going to be the ones who are responsible for submitting this information to Family League. And for this reason, we simply remind you all to make sure that you are the person who should be submitting to Family League before doing so. As we'll discuss later on in the presentation, there is a difference between saving information in Funding Track and submitting that information. Last but not least, we have the oversight level of access, 
We typically reserve this for those who are in the oversight roles of their organization or administrative roles, i.e. you may be the office manager who's responsible for uh, handling data and information for all sites for your organization. Or you may be the executive director who wants to supervise all of your sites within funding track to make sure that your reports are being completed on time. Either way, at the oversight level of access, you have all the abilities of the below uh, program staff and reviewer, as well as the ability to submit without prior approval, as <laughs> obviously. But then what's also going to change in the overview, oversight view is that you all will have access to much more information than simply the programmatic information. Program staff is limited to seeing only that information which falls under reports, and we'll talk about what that means, but uh, for the programmatic workflow, whereas oversight also is able to view anything contractual, so all of your grant and application documents, your budgets, your uh, contract documents are all going to be included for the oversight level of access. Next question. I mean, next slide. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Um, we are looking at we're halfway there. So we're going at bullet speed today. <laughs> We've already talked about how to reach us. We've talked about what is the um, browser to use, what is the optimized browser to use, and how do you log in, the different ways you can log in, the levels of access in our system, um, and roles and permissions. So we're, we're, we're moving right along. So let's go into the next slide. All right. Basically, what we've done is given you the framework for how to get into the system. And now that we're in the system, <laughs> we can talk about what that system is going to look like on the inside. So first and foremost, when you log into Funding Track, you're going to find yourself on this beautiful looking home page right there. One of the very first things you'll notice on the home page is the very first line that occurs. And what does that say? Please use Chrome only. Note the information on your home page is always going to serve as a reminder to all of the things that you can do in Funding Track, as you can see listed there, as well as a few little brief instructions or, or reminders around navigation and going where you need to go. We like to think of uh, Funding Track as sort of a file cabinet. And if you look right there at the gray menu in the center of the screen, it almost looks like a file cabinet, doesn't it? Well, each highlighted section in this file cabinet serves as a drawer. When you open that drawer, you then have your file folders inside of that drawer. In each of these file folders, there will be documents. So that is basically the idea of how Funding Track works. It unfolds like a filing cabinet like you're looking for documents in a filing cabinet. Under the information tab, you'll obviously, you'll, as you can see here uh, on our homepage, is the welcome page, uh, as well as any funding opportunities that are currently available uh, at Family League within our system. Under the applications tab, that's where you'll find all of that contractual information that oversight roles are able to view. The applications tab will not be available in the program staff view. Under the reports tab is where you're going to find the bulk of, all, of most of your workflows, which is where all of the programmatic information is. The uh, more often than not, all of your documents will appear under the report tab, reports tab in the program and data folder but we'll get into that a little later. And then last but not least, the organizations tab is where you're gonna find information on your organization if, uh, as well as what, as far as what we have uh, in terms of your organization's profile. And at the very bottom of that menu, you'll see two different items. One is the Flux icon. Flux is the development company who partnered with Family League of Baltimore to create funding track. If you're ever interested uh, and what services they have to offer or otherwise who they are, what they're about, please feel free to click on that icon. It will direct you straight to their homepage, uh, the Flux homepage. On the right, however, is where you're going to find your account management button, 
uh, that little gear is going to be how you all are able to change one, change your passwords, uh, and then two, log out of the system. We do encourage you to log out of the system every time that you use it so that you aren't uh, taking the risk of leaving sensitive information available on your computer screens or on your devices once you leave them, okay? I'd just like to add um, with regards to this portion of it, if you have um, oversight role, you'll see everything unfold like we just described. But if you have, um, let's say a program staff role like community school coordinator or uh, OST site director or, or manager, um, this is going to be a little bit different and it's going to be less items that you're going to view. Um, you may or may not see all the reports in that view as well as a program staff. You may, may not see all of your reports. If you do not see a report, usually it could be that it needs to still be assigned to you. Whereas if you are oversight, if you're an oversight person, then you're gonna see everything unfold automatically. You're gonna see if you have multiple sites, multiple schools, multiple reports, or if you're linked to multiple organizations, you should be able to see um, multiple things unfold on the screen when you go into your program and data section or even your overdue section if the, the reports are overdue, they'll also appear there. So I just wanted to add that. The views are slightly different depending on your roles and permissions in the system. Next slide. All right, so getting into the types of reports, um, depending on the program that you are operating under, you may see uh, varying types of reports. So this is just a list, this is just a running list across programs of what you may see. So you may start with your scope of work, um, EYP performance measures in RBA, uh, staffing criminal background reports, administrative reports, um, audited financial statements, uh, monthly expense reports, standard budgets, monthly data reports, and you may have versions you know, of that that are tailored to your uh, program, your specific program. Next slide. All right. So on this getting to work slide, we, uh, we put this slide here for basically one reason that was to show you all exactly what I was talking about before, how the program unfolds, right? And so on your left, you see our menu, you see our, so, our quote unquote file cabinet. And then what do you, uh, the difference that you see there, this is the program staff role or the program staff level of access uh, view that you see here. Notice that as Chevy was just telling you, we do not see the uh, applications tab and we don't see the organization tab. This is again because program staff are only privy to the information assigned to them. Uh, and that is in accordance with uh, whatever the oversight staff has mandated. Um, and so as you click, when you go to your uh, file cabinet drawer, in this case, reports drawer, and you scroll down to the program and data folder, like we said, it was where you'll almost always find your uh, document, your active documents or your active reports. Uh, you're going to click on programs data, and inside of that folder, you'll see the center there where it says train org and a little bit of brief um, information about what the document is. Now, this column, this second column, will serve as a list of documents that are within that folder. If there's only one document, this is how it will look. However, if there are multiple documents, you will see several of these little captions uh, in a row stacked underneath. I'm not in a row, in a column, in that column stacked underneath. And then once you decide which, um, <laughs> once you decide which document you actually want to open, you'll see it open up here on the right where we can now view that document. So just a quick reminder, this is how funding track unfolds for you. And that is how every report will operate for you. And as uh, I didn't necessarily mention on that previous slide, in the top right hand corner of those documents, once you've opened them, uh, you'll see the edit and print buttons there. So the only way that you're gonna get to obviously do anything with the document is to click 
edit. However, if you are there to simply create a hard copy of a document or otherwise just print it, you may print the document without entering it or uh, editing it. Um, but otherwise, to complete it, you want to click edit. All right. Um, so completing your report. Now, certain reports have specific directions that will come up on that uh, top header. So you want to follow those specific instructions if they are any included there. Um, you want to click on the fields. I'm sorry, what does it say? Clicking on a field will determine whether that field should be completed by the user. Some fields may come up already pre-filled or um, depending on the report, maybe depending on the quarter, certain items may already be pre-filled and so they won't need any changes. But the ones that come up where you have your blinking cursor, that's where you're gonna enter your data. Um, funding track is very intuitive where if you are required to complete all fields, the system will let you know when you attempt to submit it. <laughs> it will let you know that there's a problem or you're missing something, all right? Some fields will calculate automatically based on information provided in other fields. So for an example of that, like your more financial reports, um, those are going to be the ones that's gonna automatically calculate and they're very, very sensitive. You wanna make sure that when you enter your data, um, your numerical financial data, that you are saving and then continuing on. If you are needing to make changes in those types of fields, you wanna go ahead and zero it out. If you added something, you wanna remove it, then save and then go back in and enter your new numbers. As the numbers sort of, um, they sort of hold whether or not, you know, if you if you don't make those changes, if you don't save it and zero it out first, it holds the original financial numbers. And I've had many tickets for that reason. <laughs> um, some fields will be optional while some fields are mandatory. So again, the reports are gonna be specific to your program, specific to, um, you know, whatever data needs to be uh, reported on. So you want to just read and follow the instructions and follow what is required for that specific report. I'll grab this one too, Clint. Um, so certain reports will require you to upload attachments. Um, for example, if you're familiar with funding track, if you're familiar with, uh, let's say, the monthly data report, you will be uploading an attendance tracker. All right. So if you look on the top right of the screen, that very first box, it says document upload. I know it's a little small. It says document upload. And right where that green arrow is pointing to is a blue circle with a blue cross inside of it. That's where you're going to click and it's going to open up for you to be able to add your files and upload your your attachments. All right. There is no limit to the number of documents you can upload. So you can upload whatever is necessary, as many times, as many versions as you need to. Um, the specific documents that you will need to upload will be detailed in your contract and with a submission schedule. So again, um, you know, reminding you to follow the instructions that are required of that specific report. <clears throat> If you look at the second box, I'm just going to explain how the upload function um, works. If you click the document upload, it will allow you to add files that are already saved on your computer. So it, let's say, for example, you're doing your monthly data report, you will have an attendance tracker that should be already completed and saved and ready and waiting on your laptop or your computer so that you can then upload it directly from your computer using that add file button. Um, there's a screenshot that is not included here that appears um, a little bit you know, in certain reports that I'm gonna explain. So for example, if you are working with a different report that requires multiple uploads, multiple different um, document types, another piece that you want to you know, be careful of is when you upload that attachment, when you add that file, there will appear a drop down arrow with a list of document types. So if your report requires multiple types of documents to be uploaded, you want to title that rep that document you're uploading with that specific uh, document type. 
this comes in handy and I'm, I'm mentioning it here because this sometimes is an issue that comes back on the end where you can't submit your report and you're not really sure. So if your document requires, um, I'm sorry, if your report requires, let's say a uh, uh, leverage funds tracker, when you add file, you're gonna click that download, um, that down arrow and select leverage funds tracker so that the system knows that you satisfied that requirement of that report. If you just upload it without clicking the drop down and selecting your program, your document type, then it's going to go with whatever is the default. And you may have five things uploaded, but they're all showing the same type of document. And when you get to the point where you want to submit your report, the system's going to say, wait a minute, you needed to submit five different types of documents and you've only submitted one. All right, so I hope that makes sense. So you definitely want to be careful. Depending on the report, there's a further step in making sure that you let the system know that I'm uploading this specific document type. All right, and of course, the last part of it, um, the bottom right, is what it looks like after you've uploaded it. So you're going to see things that were uploaded before. They're just going to be listed here. They're going to be like a blue hyperlink that you can access and you can view. So you'll see everything that you've uploaded, that anyone's uploaded before, anyone else who has had access to your report. It's gonna be all listed there. Clint, look at this, we're, we're almost there. <laughs> we're almost there. I forgot, I was muted. So, <laughs> so just a quick reminder, everyone, um, we just put this out here so that you all remember, Save on submit, and we said we talk about it later on in the presentation. And so, when you click on a save icon, once you completed a report in Funding Track, you're going to click on the save icon to save your information that you changed. But we want you to always be careful and recognize that once you click on the save button, the button then transitions into the submit button after the loading is complete. So we want to be careful that if we are not ready to submit a report, we don't want to submit it prematurely. So we're going to be careful when we click on the save button and we're going to only click it once and then wait for it to load. If it does not load, we say a rule of thumb is two minutes. If, it does, if nothing's happened in two minutes, then you click again. But we don't want to go click happy and just, you know, click, 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 because we don't want to accidentally submit a report that isn't ready to be uh, submitted. All right. So save the day, don't submit. And then let me just oh oh go, 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 go for it go for it. No, what I was going to add to that is um, you definitely want to know if you're not sure if you're the one that needs to submit the report, don't submit. All right, um, that's critical because when you operate within funding track, it's like a tennis match. So anything that you submit is then going to leave your court, it's going to leave your view and then be in ours and you will no longer have access to it. Okay. When you have access to it again, it would have gone through the approval process, you know, review and approval process, and it would either come back to you and we'll talk about it in another slide, but it's going to either come back to you asking for changes. So it's returned to you for changes and then you submit it again, or it's going to come back to you once it's through the approval process and then you'll see it in your view again so you definitely want to be careful not to just go ahead and submit and be clicky happy like like clint said you don't want to be clicky happy and just go ahead and click submit because then it will disappear from your view and then you may have to send me a ticket asking to send it back to you all right now funny track is not uh, it doesn't necessarily speak english but it does talk to us in a couple of ways right <laughs> And so one of those ways, uh, or all of those ways, are through its notifications. Now, Funding Track will always pretty much, for the most part, let you know that you're doing something right. Uh, and in some cases, it'll let you know that you're doing something wrong, right? So when you enter information into a report and you're uh, making changes to that report, once you click Save, when you click Save, or if you're opening a report, you'll notice that the uh, icon in the top left corner the loading icon will appear. This lets you know that Funding Track is working hard for you and that it will soon be there. Admittedly, Funding Track can be a bit slow at times. It simply depends on one, your level of internet connection, 
or the stability of your internet connection. And then it also depends on how many users are in the system at any given time, both internally and externally, okay? Uh, if you all submit a report and you do it correctly, the report has been filled out correctly, the report is complete, and as far as funding track is concerned, all requirements for the report have been met. Once you click submit, you'll see the icon in, or you'll see the dialog box or the pop-up, however you want to refer to it, in the center of the screen that says request report was successfully updated. Now, on the other side of that, if you do not completely fill in all of the fields for a report, or if maybe you filled in a number field with text, or if you filled in uh, anything incorrectly or you left something out, you'll get the uh, notification on the bottom right-hand corner of your screen that looks kind of like a warning, right? So that what that uh, notification is going to do is two things. It is not only going to let you know what's missing from your report and what you should then go back and correct. As you see there, it lists out a couple of things. Uh, for this example, we took a scope of work and we didn't fill in any of the fields and we submitted it. And so the, uh, the notification told us that our errors were uh, address can't be blank, program start date cannot be blank, program end date cannot be blank, number of days per week cannot be blank, so on and so forth. So funding track is going to let you know exactly what you did incorrectly. And not only is it going to do that, but it's going to open up the report. So at the time that you're seeing this notification, that means that your report has been reopened for you and you're now inside of the edit function. So you will need to save after making those corrections. Basically, it's funding checks way of saying, oh no, you're gonna fix this right now, <laughs> so to speak. Now, once you've submitted or made a change, once you change a report's state or otherwise change information on that report, that is creating an update in the system. And so in the top right-hand corner, you'll see what that update notification looks like on your folder, uh, within your folders list, so to speak. So you've gone inside of that drawer, that file cabinet drawer, you chose a folder, and where all those documents are listed in that middle column, you're gonna see this notification at the top. Now, if multiple reports have been updated, you will see whatever that number is reflected in that notification. So instead of saying one update available, it'll say two or three or so on and so forth. But that notification will always be at the top of the list. And then last but not least, another way that the system lets you know that there's been a change made to some document is on the menu itself. When you log in the funding track and you see that menu, it'll let you have it'll show you these little orange icons next to whatever folder contains documents that have uh, that have had changes made. Again, if there's more than one document in the folder that needs to be changed or that has been changed, uh, it'll not only say one, it'll say two, it'll say three, so on and so forth. But this is the system's way of letting you know that a change has been made inside of one of your folders. That's that special yoga role, if you are an oversight person. Computer voice, Chevy. Oh, oh. Robot voice. Oh, no. <laughs> I will take, um, Chevy's going to fix her audio. And I will take, I'll just go ahead and do this one. Uh, so the status flow. So as Chevy, as Chevy mentioned before, working in funding track is like playing a game of tennis. Once you all submit a report, it then leaves your court and enters Family League's court. Once it's in Family League's court, you all cannot see it, but it's our job to do what we have to do with it before we send it back. Now, I'm going to go through this uh, real quick. So there are basically three main statuses, right, or states, so to speak, for a report that are relevant for you all. That is the original reporting state or status. That is the approved status. Uh, that original reporting status is going to be the reporting status that it comes to you in. So when we say reporting status, this is the form that the uh, report takes when you first receive it and you are charged with putting information into the report to submit back to Family League. Approved status 
is the goal for every report. The idea behind the approved status is once we've gotten there, we no longer have anything else to do with that report. Uh, and then, then we have the return status. The return status is almost identical to the reporting status. However, return only occurs when we've sent a report back to you. However, functionality for that report will remain exactly the same as it was in the reporting status, where you will be able to edit, make changes to the report, and then resubmit it. Now, with out of all of these three, only two of them will all of you be able to see. So for those who are program staff, you will be able to see a report that is assigned to you in its reporting status. Once you submit that report, it goes away. You will not see it anymore. Once it is in the approved state, it will reappear for you in the approved drawer or in the approved folder. When it's in the return status, you will also see it, but it will look just like it did in your reporting status. The only difference is that information that's on the little caption will say a different status, and that's perfectly fine. Just simply remember that all reports will first appear for you in its respective reporting state for the program type, uh, and then all reporting workflows have been completed once they reach the approved status. And then reports can be returned to users if they do not have, uh, if they have not been completed correctly, or if the information within that report has not been completed correctly. Please be aware, our reports, most of the reports we submit go through several channels of approval, right? If it's, it's either going to our funded partnerships department, it's going to our DE department in some cases, if it's like performance measures or programmatic information, it's going to our program team. If we're talking scopes of work or uh, any of that type of information around program needs. And then it's also going to go to your program specialist individually for review. So if it's been returned to you, it is because something in the report has not been done correctly. And then last but not least, we want to make sure that you uh, just reiterate reports are only visible to the users in one of these states. These are the only times that you all will see the reports is if they are in one of these states. Otherwise, we're playing that game of tennis and the report is in Family League's court. Okay. And Chevy's back. Yay. <laughs> Just I hope I'm not computer voice. <laughs> no, you are not. All clear now. All right. Well, just in time for questions. Um, do we have any questions on what you saw this morning? Any steps, any parts of it? Yeah, I uh, have a couple of questions. Um, pretty basic, I think. One is, uh, well, the first one is, are, is this presentation actually going to be distributed? Um, yes. OK, yeah. got it. Um, so the other questions are, um, w when we talk about how um, once we submit the application, obviously, if it's returned, if it's accepted, I imagine there'll be some kind of email notification to the organization. But what about, and sorry if I missed this, but what about if um, within the application process, if there's a, if you guys make an update or are there any other um, points in the process when you guys would reach out to us or do we actually have to be checking the status or, or checking the uh, funding track daily to kind of get our own updates? Ah, very good question, Mr. Brown. Absolutely. So we recommend, um, we do recommend, especially in the early stages of your using or being a new user in Funding Track, that you check Funding Track once a day. Um, and it's not necessarily saying that you're always going to have something to do in Funding Track, but as you may recognize or that you'll begin to recognize once you start, you know, doing the work is that typically if you submit a report to family, there's about a 24 to 48 hour turnaround for that report to be responded to, for someone to actually get it, be able to review it. Always keep in mind, guys, you all are submitting a single report, but on our end, we get to see all of your reports at one time to review them. And so that's important to keep in mind, right? 
And so think of it this way. Every time you submit a report, there are there's a section in the report where there is it's called cure comments. Now, when something has been sent back to you, we're going to send it back to you and we're going to include the cure, in the cure comments section what needs to be corrected about the report. As you, as you mentioned before, yes, there is an email notification that, uh, that can possibly go out. I will admit sometimes the email does not go out. However, if you are checking your funding track account every day, once a day, or at least about twice a week, then you're sure to catch any of the changes that uh, come in. And then you all can also be looking for uh, announcements from your respective program uh, representatives here at Family League as well. Did I answer all of that? You did. Sorry, I was on mute. Uh, okay. Thank you for, for that. I think my, my last one is, uh, given I'm, I'm, I'm new to my organization, and so getting set up in uh, funding track um, now, but I was wondering, does every, does, is there one login for each organization or does every person in the organization who's active in funding track get a separate login? Every user would have their own access and login. Okay. Okay, so who, who, do, who do I reach out for that to for that because I uh, reached out to you guys uh, the last couple of days and I got kind of smack on the hand for emailing the wrong person. So <laughs> I, I think I do, have a, I, I do have access, but I don't have login info. Okay, <clears throat> so you did, you did send the ticket in and I was yeah. working on it. Um, and it wasn't a smack. <laughs> no, it wasn't actually you, Chevy. It was, but, but that's, we can talk offline about that. Okay. <laughs> once you're clear. So, um, you know, once I, I got that ticket in from you asking you asking for um, ask access into the system. And I then uh, reached out to funded partnerships to make sure that they confirm that um, because you should, you know, request for new users to be created. Um, it doesn't just come in externally to us you have to reach out to funded partnerships to confirm that process, all right? Um, so once we had that confirmation from them, your user profile was created, and I know we're talking specifically you in this moment, um, but you're, you know, that's sort of the process, um, and your profile is created, you get an email that gives you the ability to create your own unique password. That happens instantly once I create your profile in the system. So did you receive that email? I probably did. If if not, I will uh, reach back out to you. And uh, that's fine too. Okay. So if you okay. if you had an issue receiving that email, maybe it's lost in spam or cyberspace somewhere, I can then create a password for you and you can change that later, but I can send that to you so you can gain access to the system. Um, once you log in, um, depending on your role and permissions, I don't recall at this time, but depending on your role and permissions, you may or may not see, like we talked about earlier in this presentation, you may or may not see everything unfold. So let's say you are um, created for oversight view and permissions, you'll see everything automatically unfold when you log in. Or if you're program staff, like community school coordinator or OSD, then what you will see in there would be items or reports that are assigned to you. So we may need to do an additional step on our end and assign specific reports that you then will have access to. Or if those reports are not in reporting status that we mentioned also earlier, then they won't appear in your view at that time because there's nothing for you to work on at that time. So if you log in and there, nothing is in there, don't panic. <laughs> it's just a matter of, you know, whether it's in reporting status, whether those reports needs to be assigned to you at that point in time and, you know, whatever is, is happening. We need to know a little more information as to what's going on. But don't panic if you log in there and you go to program and data and you don't see anything uh, pending at that time. Gotcha. And just like that reiterating note, um, guys, if you are receiving emails from Funding Track, be sure to check your spam folders, especially if you are new to the system. Um, your email may read it as spam. And so go ahead and be sure to check so that you can go ahead and get it out of that spam folder or that junk email folder 
um, for future notifications from Fun and Track, okay? Any other questions? Not all at once. Not all at once, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Now I'm going to put that as we did that great of a job. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and um, but in the future, guys, if you have any uh, if you have anything that you are concerned with or any questions, comments, concerns, um, if you need any changes made, please remember to always do um, submit a help desk ticket first. Uh, this is not only like remember the help desk is not only for like your IT needs. It's simply a way for us to filter our requests as an organization for for aid, right? And so, Shebby, if Shebby can't answer your question, she'll be sure to get you to the right person who can. Um, and she usually does. She does so quite really quickly. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, just be sure to always make sure that you are entering a help desk ticket. If you if it makes you feel better, you can also CC one of us or CC your program specialist um, or your uh, fun, uh, your uh, contracts person. Uh, but for the most part, you do not need to do these uh, CCs. You can simply submit the help desk ticket and it will go to whoever it needs to go to. OK. Thank you for that, Clint. <laughs> Okay, and, thank you. Yeah, there we go. Oh, go, you handing over to Kiana or? That's amazing, Dewana. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Clint. <laughs> thank you um, to our IT team for such a great detailed presentation today. As you see, um, funding track is a fundamental component to our partnership, and it's an extremely important that you gain a full understanding of its purpose and its use. Um, to all of our partners, we thank you all so much for attending today's session. Our goal during the week has really been to provide you with a wealth of information and tools to help guide you through our partnership, ensuring that all contract requirements are fulfilled and met and services are delivered to maximum capacity and effectiveness. We encourage you to view these sessions that have been shared with you via email and refer back to them for specific instructions or guides to help you navigate our contracting, programming, and payment process. Um, please take advantage of all of the support mechanisms that have been shared with you by my colleagues, as well if you run into any challenges. Our website, www.familyleague.org, contains all of the contact information for the departments, staff members, and emails that you can reach out to to receive the assistance that you need. I also want to give a special thank you to my Family League colleagues who are affectionately known as the family for all of their coordination and participation to share more information about their departments, programs, and tools along with the awesome work that they do. Um, as Clint shared early, as Clint just shared, and we share with you throughout the week, you never reach the wrong person at the Family League. We will make sure that you are directed to the individual or individuals who can address any of your questions or concerns. So please do not hesitate to contact us. Um, as a reminder, each day's virtual session will be made available to each of you via email and will also be uh, made available tomorrow um, on our website. We are quite excited about this upcoming year of partnership. And as you see, and I hope you feel, um, we value your organization and the services that you provide, which will really help further allow us to make a significant and positive impact in the communities of Baltimore City. Again, we very much appreciate your partnership, are extremely invested in your success, and look forward to a magnificent and impactful year. Thank you, and you all have a wonderful rest of the day. Y'all too. Thank you.